Greetings. My name is Harlan Simon of HarlanGlass.com. Welcome again. In this segment, I will be showing how to make one of my pa patterned Harlequin style beads. From mandrel of nothing to mandrel of something. This is an example of a bead that I love making. I've made it for a long time. And uh, I'm using a dotting method to achieve straight lines. Normally, when you put down glass and heat it, you're getting uh, rounded dots, but by virtue of putting dots next to each other and an alternating pattern across from each other, you achieve sort of a triangle shape. So this would be a triangular sort of harlequin or a drum style bead. And uh, these kinds of beads are featured on the back of the Thousand Glass Beads book by Lark Publication on the top. The top two left ones are mine. And um, that's what I'm going to be showing. All right, so let us begin. First order of business is to grab a mandrel. Well, strike that. The first order of business is to make a stringer out of the aquamarine that I'm going to be using. I've chosen my colors. I'll be doing um, cobalt blue and aquamarine and some emerald. So I'm going to create a stringer by melting in the middle of this medium aquamarine transparent ephedra glass. Especially with the aquamarines, you want to kind of keep the propane down and the temperature relatively cool. Aquamarine can uh, frizzle and the copper oxides can be coaxed out to sort of make it mucky if you um, are too aggressive on the heat. So I'm basically taking my time. I kind of have a fairly lean, neutral to lean or neutral to slightly oxygenating flame and I'm working fairly far out of the flame where I know the flame is relatively clean and relatively cool. So it's a little bit slower of a process, but the result will be a glass that is purer and cleaner to use. So I'm going to pull a stringer from these six or seven millimeter rods. I'm going to make a thinner version, and that's what pulling a stringer is. If you're just tuning in now to this particular bead segment, by all means do not overlook the safety section that is in a previous segment and take to heart the notion that this can be a very dangerous hobby or avocation. So follow all applicable safety rules. Get yourself a good personal instructor. Take a class. Don't rely on this video. This is for recreational purposes and entertainment purposes only. You really need to have hands-on instruction guiding you as to all the proper safety methods for um, handling hot glass. Anyway, I've got a nice little glob going. I rotate simultaneously. You can change your angle to pump in heat from different from both sides. Pull out of the heat if you feel you're getting out of control a little bit. Take your time. Hang out. Listen to the glass. One more heating, and I'm ready to start to pull. Coaxing it out gently, gently, gently. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Quicker now, quicker, 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 quicker. Going down to four millimeter, three millimeter, and stopping at about two and a half millimeters. Pulling straight, so I have a nice straight stick of glass. It's still kind of malleable, so you can put it up in the vertical and hang it down. And that then freezes it, so now we're in perfectly straight position. Always be aware of where the flame is. Don't burn yourself and use the flame as a cutter if you want. Pulling straight out. Put hot end away so you don't, next time round, inadvertently grab the hot end. And remember that this part here is hot, so put this whole thing down to air cool on your um, rod rest. Always being super careful to know where the flame is so as to not burn your hand or forearm. 
Now I reach for my pre-coated mandrel. I get it nice and toasty. I'm going to put down a base of black. I can tune my flame up a little bit, a little hotter. I start to dip my cane of black into the flame, pointing away from me, not like this, folks, but down away so that if there's any thermal shock and splatter, it doesn't go into your face. Of course, I'm wearing eyeglasses, protective lenses, didymium, but I still don't want to splatter any unnecessary shards or fragments of hot glass. So I point down until the cane starts getting globby and hot, and then you can, you can hold it at a right angle to yourself. And then loop it on, slowly, slowly, slowly. I tend to not put the glass on a too large expanse of mandrel. I like to kind of keep it in a narrow band, because then I can melt it down and slump it and achieve more symmetry and nice pucker in the base bead. So don't be tempted to kind of just, unless you want a cylinder bead or you want a bead that has a wide profile, well then it would be natural to lay down your initial glass over a wide expanse of mandrel. But in the instance of these little beads, it's really better to kind of go narrow, almost like a disc, and build up your bead base. And then in the next stage, heat it while you're rotating and land it like a helicopter down onto itself. And that then builds in an inherent pucker to the bead, which is pleasing and uh, creates a nice smooth line right at the point at which the glass touches the mandrel. The alternative to that would have been a wide expanse, and then as you heat it up, the glass wants to kind of retract, and that then leaves these things, I sort of haven't figured out what to call them, and for want of a better term, I've used the name shark's teeth. It's a sort of a shark's tooth phenomenon, where the glass is retracting, but it's anchored down on the mandrel, on the bead release, so it leaves these little t sort of sharp-edged teeth at the ends, and uh, it's not real pleasing. It's not good to, doesn't feel good when you touch it, when the bead is cool and you clean it off your mandrel. So it's better to put a disc on first and then land it down like a helicopter straight onto itself through this careful and deliberate rotation that I was um, performing while I was just talking. So we've almost, we have an automatic, beautiful, basically perfect bead. And that's the base of black. In terms of the next step, I'm going to introduce white. I'm going to make white dots. And I probably should have pulled this one down to, there you saw an example of thermal shocking. It can be very uh, projectile, so be careful. Keep this hot, f flashing it in the heat. And it, it's probable I should have just sort of pulled down a stringer initially on this white one. So if you forgot to do that, I'll show you sort of a, a little trick on how to pull an emergency stringer. You get your gather going. Let it cool down slightly. Keep your bead alive. Put in heat one last time. Anchor on to your mandrel. Take your time. Wait, 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 wait. And pull. So that's an emergency stringer. You can clean that little excess off, just like that. And remember now it's very hot right there, so Hold it like a pencil fairly far away from the lead. Now we're going to come in and we're going to dot on with our stringer. I'm going to choose, uh, make this a five cell on each side, five cell dot pattern. And because it's a stringer now, you have far less control, so you should do this further out in the flame. Two. Three, four, and five. And it's kind of hard to do five. You kind of just do, a, do it a lot of time and, and 
you get the hang of it, and I still don't always get it perfect. You can go back and bulk it up more. One. Now that you have, you know, the original dots as landing pads, it's much easier to go back. And sort of equalize these dots in terms of their mass. Heat them up so they don't pop off. You don't have to worry about melting them in all the way right now because we're going to do the next row in between the first row. So one. You'll notice how close I'm going. That's really kind of key. If there's too much space, when the glass melts down, it doesn't impinge enough on its neighbor to get that triangular harlequin design effect. So you want, you want the spacing to be just right. And it really varies with how much glass you're using in your dot and how big your bead is. So it's kind of the kind of thing that you're going to have to experiment with in terms of getting just right. But you definitely know when it's not enough because once you melt these, these dots down, they don't uh, start forming triangular lines properly. So we'll see what we've got. And you can go back though. You could always add more white, for example, that would cause more impingement. But we have a nice separation line now because I used a black base and that's what's showing through. And we're not even done because this is just the movie screen part. This is the reflective screen. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my color tints.